Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Hey, we are a few months out from the 2023 legislative session. That's right. Scheduled to start on January 9th of 2023. Your state legislature will be hard at work starting that day, coming up with new and creative ways to disarm the lawful and responsible gun owners throughout this state. We're going to start a series of videos. We'll be dropping these videos every so often once we can kind of connect dots or read the tea leaves and understand. But as we begin to really get a clearer picture on what is likely to come our way this legislative session, we're going to start doing these kind of prognostications. So today, we're going to have to spend a few minutes and talk about how they will try to create a state gun registry. Okay, before we get going down the road, we're going down. Proud to announce that this video is being brought to you by Security Gun Club. That's right. Washington's nicest indoor facility is right there in Woodenville, Washington. Security Gun Club is by far the Taj Mahal of indoor gun facilities. The only thing nicer, however, than their facilities, well, that's two things. Number one, Tom, the owner over there, and his staff are absolutely some of the nicest, most professional people you'll find anywhere in the industry. Stop by, tell them... Hi, tell them I sent you. But the thing that really impresses me the most about security, well, that is their dedication to training over there. Their dedication to education is second to none. Whether you're brand new to guns and you're just trying to figure things out or you've been around guns your entire life, Jackson and the folks at security have developed a curriculum to cater to anybody's needs. Ladies, are you new to firearms or you want to get familiar with firearms? We'll sign up for the ladies only classes. And for all of you, you go to the range all the time to practice so that you can stay out of the morgue. But what do you practice to make sure you can stay out of prison? Well, sign up for their basic self-defense law class taught by yours truly once a month. So for more information, visit them at securitygunclub.com. Yeah, yes, that's not a misprint. That is security with an E. That's securitygunclub.com. Okay, so the issue we're talking about today was brought to my attention through an article in the Kitsap Sun on September 12th, a fine publication over there in the Kitsap Peninsula. Um, this article dealt with what had become of Initiative 1639. Oh my God, why is he talking about 1639? I know that's what you're saying. Well, we have to kind of take a look at a historical perspective about all the things that were implemented on 1639 and one thing that wasn't and what that might mean to you. Because as I'm beginning to read the quotes from the powers that be in Olympia, I think they are gearing up to create a state gun registry. Now, what leads me to believe it? Well, let's go back in our way back machine. Let's warp back in time here to 2018 when we passed Initiative 1639. Now, Initiative 1639 promised to do all sorts of things um, and managed to survive a single subject test, although the $30 car tabs did not, but I digress. But what did 1639 do? Well, it did a laundry list of things. Number one, it created all sorts of new safe storage measures. Number two, it raised the purchase age for semi-automatic rifles from 18 to 21. Number three, it required a whole new enhanced background check system to be implemented so that when we purchased semi-automatic rifles, there was new waiting periods created for semi-automatic rifles. There was a whole new level of access given to anybody's mental health records who was purchasing any type of firearm. And then, of course, there was the 1639 safety class, a class that all of us needed to take before we purchased the semi-automatic rifle because that is how we were going to save lives. Now, all of those were implemented, okay? There was one other part, though, of 1639 that was not has yet to be implemented four years after this uh, initiative went into legislation, and that is that Department of Licensing, was supposed to create a system by which on an annual basis the state could check the records of all firearm owners in this state to ensure that they were still eligible to possess a firearm. Okay, let me let me back this up and try to explain this so you can understand. Under Initiative 169, the state of Washington Department of Licensing was to create a background check system which current gun owners in the state of Washington would be run through annually once a year 
to make sure that we had not become ineligible to possess a firearm. Now, we can recognize that considering the fact that Department of Justice and Statistics say that 88.8% of all gun crimes committed in the United States are committed by people who are unlawfully possessing the firearm at the time they commit the crime. We did a video about that right here, that keeping guns out of those who are ineligible to possess firearms is part of ensuring lawful and responsible gun ownership. So while we don't get too supportive of gun legislation, certainly coming out of Olympia, we do understand the need for that. But here's the thing, here's the thing, and this is the good news and the bad news, because we can certainly understand the privacy and constitutional issues that would go in recurring background checks that the state is running on us to in order so that we can maintain the constitutional rights that we never lost to begin with. But the good news, bad news is this. The, the, the good news is that this system has never been implemented. You see, the Department of Licensing, when they went out and studied this, they came back to the conclusion that this was no longer cost-efficient or feasible under the current system. And I want to emphasize that under the current system. So this piece of legislation, this part of 1639, has never been implemented. Now, the state and those who supported 1639, including our Attorney General, one of the rare things where an Attorney General actually signs off in support of an initiative, okay, but they've all been real quiet about this, and some of the supporters of 1639, some of the big fundraisers for 1639 were unaware that this system had not only not been implemented, but the state had done a cursory report on this, a cursory study to see how feasible this was, and came up with the conclusion that, eh, we can't do it under the current system, okay? So that's the good news. What's the bad news? Well, when confronted about this, we have to take a listen to what Governor Inslee's office is suggesting here because this is where we need to be alarmed. Because when the press, the Kitsap Sun, went to Governor Inslee through spokesperson Mike Falk, this is what the governor had to say. There is a rationale for being able to determine if a person is disqualified from possessing a firearm after purchase. It's important. The issue is that there is not a way to legally conduct the check under our current system. The governor would welcome the opportunity to work with the legislature to identify a viable path forward to conduct these checks. So what the current system that they're talking about is that there is no way to cross-reference a person's criminal history and their purchase records because the purchase records, 4473s, are typically maintained by the federal government, and the background check system would be run by the state government. And so unless you had some other way of having a depository of information about gun owners, it's virtually impossible to run these checks. Hmm, how could we solve that? Well, when the Kitsap Sun was exploring this issue, one of the people they talked to was someone in the Office of Financial Management for the state of Washington. Now, that's probably an oxymoron when you think about it, the Office of Financial Management in the state of Washington. But I want you to listen very carefully to what they believe the solution is. The Office of Financial Management report floated the idea of creating an endorsement system that would require people to get background checks before they purchase the weapon, similar to a process currently conducted in Washington for those who apply for concealed pistol licenses. The state maintains a database of people with concealed pistol licenses and can check that database to revoke licenses if prohibiting records pop up, according to the report. Then they went on to further state, if this system is developed to the point that all relevant state data reaches it in a timely manner, any individual with a clear firearm endorsement can be assumed to pass any state level check. Conversely, any new information that would create a person to fail a state check would preempt the check entirely by causing a hold to be placed on their gun endorsement. So what the state is proposing here, or what the people in the Office of Financial Management are talking about, which inevitably will be picked up by Governor Inslee and Attorney General Ferguson and everyone on the political left is, is what we need in this state in order to save lives is a license in order to go purchase the firearm. Essentially, the state is going to want you to conduct a background check before you're given the opportunity to go conduct a background check and purchase a firearm. What do they do with all of the data that they collect before they bless you or anoint you with the privilege to go exercise a constitutional right? Well, they've already told you what they're going to do with that data. They're going to collect that data, and they're going to use that data 
to cross-reference every year to ensure that we all remain lawful and responsible gun owners. That, my friends, is the creation of a state gun registry. Please be aware of this. We will obviously be tracking any legislation that's coming out of Olympia as soon as it's signed a bill number. You will be the first to know. In the meantime, if you have any questions about pending legislation in Olympia come 2023 or anything else related to what's left of your Second Amendment rights, remember you can always contact us at WashingtonGunLaw.com or, of course, you can call us directly at 425-765-0487. Now, let's remember... Part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here at Washington Gun Law, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching, and stay safe.